heart strong Jesus keep me from all wrong I'll be satisfied as long as I walk close to Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for bringing us to our Bible study once again today. We pray, Lord, that as we study today, your spirit will impress and write and plant the word in our hearts in Jesus' name. We pray, O Lord, that you use the word to mature and strengthen us. And your help us to be victorious in our Christian lives in Jesus' name. Where we're weak, make us strong. If anyone has done something that displeased you, we we'll pray you forgive and you cleanse and you make such people to be stable and steadfast in the Lord in Jesus' name. 
and that rap me, Rufania, Beck, Dari Jiwa, care for Wama, care for Wama, Law Latitus, why like Marshall, Tio Domain in your call Jesus. Plant her feet on the solid rock that will never fall. FPS, Waloria, Pata, Nantica, Vinilla Subo, in Jesus' name, we pray. Ni Oruko Jesu Jesunia Badura. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. Ebe ruri keta la, la tia seke nisi keta. Let brotherly love continue. Ki ipi araki o watiti. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. E ma se bagi, la ti ma se alejo. Ni tori kwenye pa abe, ni awe lo, mi ron se awangeli, ni alejo la ima. Remember them that are in bonds, as bound with them. And them which suffered adversity. city, as being yourselves also in the body. Emma Rati and one day, be any tea at the Peluma, at tea and what you and follow you, be any Tikara, you can look in Beninara. It reminds us of the love of God in the heart of the believer. Tora Walet, if you're alone in Wakonibago, and it calls that brotherly love. Urukoto Sipeleni, if you are that is love in the family of God. In any if anywhere be alone, love among the children of God, brothers and sisters. If a Larry and one more Laurel, Larry or Korea, if we are born again, that love is already shared abroad by the Holy Ghost. Now he says obviously, if Christ is in you, that love is in you. It says, let it be manifested. Let brotherly love, which has started at the point of conversion, let it continue. And then it now gives us some practical details and examples of that love. He's telling us not to be forgetful to entertain strangers. In those early days, there were believers that moved from one place to the other, and there were strangers to those believers they were meeting for the first time. At that time, it wasn't common to have hotels and for people to have some guest houses where they could stay. And so the believers who are being told, don't forget, there will be brothers and sisters, they may be strangers to you, they will need accommodation, they will need some hospitality, do not be forgetful, entertain them, help them, lodge them, and be of uh, assistance to them. And for the encouragement, he said, others who have done that in the past, unknowingly, they have entertained and they have been hospitable to angels. At that time, there were some believers still suffering persecution. And some of them were in prison. And so the apostle was telling them, you'll remember, those who are in bonds feel like they feel. Weep with those who are weeping, as they rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Those in bonds, be as if you are bound with them. Apostle was weeping, and for those who suffer adversity, persecution, affliction, do not act as if you are not concerned. You will be yourselves in the body with them. Let brotherly love continue. If you manifest that kind of love, whatever you do to the least of the brethren, you are doing unto the Lord. In Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 34, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Why? For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat, I was a thirst, and ye gave me drink, I was a stranger, and ye took me in. 
on gbe gbe mi eyin si fun mi le omi mu mo ji alejo eyin si gba mi si ilo eke na ye clothe me i was sick and ye visited me i was in prison and ye came unto me mo wa ni o eyin si da sobo mi mo si aisan eyin si boju to mi mo wa ni nu tubu eyin si to mi wa and you will see how the lord refer to these people that all their acts of kindness all their deeds of goodness and all their hearts all their acts of hospitality although they did it to people they did it unto him wa ri gaga bi oluwa tin so nipa awon eyan won yi pe gbogbo iwa isore ati ore ti won ta awon eniyan ati owo ore ti won na si won bi o ti le je pe awon elomiran ni won se fun oluwa ni won se fun in fact they were surprised and they began to ask him when did we see you to do that to you in verse 40 the king shall answer and say unto them verily i say unto you in as much as ye had done it Unto one of the least of these my brethren you have done it unto me and not ile ya won ni gbagbo won yi won sin bere lowo oluwa pe ni gbawo ni awa si awon nkan won yi fun o ni ese ogoji oba yo si down yo si fun won pe lo to ni mo wi fun yin ni won bi ayin ti se fun okan ninu awon arakunrin mi won yi ti o kere ju lo eyin ti se fun mi you might wonder and you might say i don't think i will ever meet an angel and be hospitable and lend the helping hand to an angel the lord is saying you don't need to meet an angel you can do something that will get into your record and it will be higher than doing it for an angel do it for the least of the brethren in the kingdom of god you do it unto me the master of angels enu le ma ya wi pe ni jowo ni wa se alaba pade angel lati se lalejo so go lu wa so wi pe o ko ni lo lati pade angel kankan iwo sa na wo ore tabi owo ikanu si ikan to kere ju ni lo ninu awon arakunrin mi iwo ti se fun mi and then in acts of the apostles chapter 9 ninu si awon apostle ori kesan verse 5 ese ikanu e verse 4 and he fell to the earth and he had a voice in soul soul why persecutest thou me ese ikanrin o si subu lule o gbo ohun tin fo si pe solu solu ese ti won se ninu nibi ni si mi and he said who art thou lord o si pe iwo ta ni oluwa and he said i am jesus whom you are persecuting oluwa si pe emi jesus ni eni ti won se ninu nibi ni si and so you see what saul did to the believers it was like he did it to the lord o wa ri gbang baba pe o ti solu se si awon ni gbagbo se lo dabi en ko oluwa gan lo se si the kind to the believers so being kind to the lord himself ti o ba je olore tabi alarun fun awon ni gbagbo oluwa lo so to the believers who have been hospitable to the lord ti o ba se itori alarun fun awon oni gbagbo oluwa lo se show practical love to the believers so shame practical love to the lord o fi fe soju se si awon ni gbagbo oluwa lo nse fun but now you see in hebrews chapter 13 so wa ri ni ebe rori ketala bayi immediately after teaching on practical love among the brethren the apostle now begins to speak on marriage being honorable lese kese ti apostle na pari eko lori ife afi soju se laarin awon ara ni o wa bere si soro lori igbeyawo pe o je ohun ti o lo la and you can see the connection verses 1 to 3 talking about love among the brethren and then verse 4 telling us how to keep marriage which is actually uh, something that the lord had given in among him among human beings to show a kind of love keep that pure and keep that holy and keep it honorable o wa le ri asipo tin be laarin ese ikini siketa ati ese ikerin bi a tin fi ife han laarin awon ara ti a fi ife han si ara wa sibe sibe oluwa wa wi pe igbeyawo o gbodo lo la laarin awon eniyan tori na e je ki ele na ko wa ni mi mo laarin eniyan in hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 e be ro ri keta la ese ikerin marriage is honorable in all ki igbeyawo ki o lo la le a re ko ni ki a kete si je ala ile ri but among girls and adulterers god will judge nitori awon agbere ati awon pansaga ni olorun yo da lejo you will see in this verse for a balance of the teaching of the word of god wa wa ri pe ni ese ikerin yi apostle ko ro le pakan lori oro olorun you will see the positive side you will see the negative side wa ri ha to dara ni egbe kan ati ha to buru ni ha keji let me give you this illustration for example je fo ni afiwe gege bi agbere if you see a man ti wo ba ri okunrin kan and he has said hands that are too long ti o ba ni owo to gun lopopopo it's good to have a hand o da lati lo If the hand is too long it becomes an abnormal man ti owo ba wa di ko gun ja ju gbogbo ara lo eleti ba lo if you find a man that has a nose that is uh, so big as big as long as uh, you know from the tip of the fingers uh, to the elbow you know that is abnormal ti o ba wa pade okunrin kan to je pe o ni mu ni toto sugbon mu re o gun ju owo lo iru eyan be abukun la ni when you take a doctrine of the bible and you elongate it you prolong it you exaggerate it you make it very big that it gets out of proportion out of size it becomes abnormal it becomes false doctrine nigba ti wona ba mu okan ninu eko oro olorun to wa nfa agun 
to n fa gboro gbo titi ti o fi re koja ala ti olorun la sile iyan ti ba luma that's why you find in this bus for it's very balanced on the positive side marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled idi ni ti o fi ri ni ese ikerin wi pe gbogbo egun rege ni ti igbeyawo ni ki igbeyawo ki o ni ola laarin gbogbo eniyan ki akete si ji ala ile and then the other side of the coin it tells us but all mongers and adulterers god will judge ni akeji o wa so fun agbangba pe nitori awon agbere ati awon pansaga ni olorun yo da lejo as we look at that verse we are going to divide the study into three they are saying we say yi a pe eko na si eka meta god's honor of marriage without immorality akoko ni ola ti olorun fun igbeyawo ti ko le ri number two god's great judgment against immorality ekeji idajo nla olorun lori iwa iri number three godliness and freedom from immorality eketa iwa bi olorun ati omi nira kuro ninu iwa iri let's look at number one god's eje, honor of eje, marriage without immorality eje ki awo koko akoko ola ti olorun fi fun igbeyawo ti ko le ri it says in verse four marriage is honorable in all ni ese ikerin oni ki igbeyawo ko ni ola laarin gbogbo eni when you look at the word of god you need to interpret in a balanced measure nigba to ba wo oro olorun o ye ko tun ma re ni ona to go rege i want you to look at the word all mo fe ki owo gbogbo eni aye obviously it's talking about human society it's talking about people it's talking about people that have life and people who have been born who have a desire to give birth to others and they do that legitimately in marriage daju daju o so nipa o ma dari hurun eniyan ti abi ninu obirin eni ti abi to si ni ilepa ati ati ife ninu okan re lati bi eniyan ninu aye yi oni ki igbeyawo ko lala laarin gbogbo won now marriage is honorable in all ki igbeyawo ki o ni ola laarin gbogbo eniyan what does that mean all ki ni ele wa tun ma si pe gbogbo eniyan it cannot be all infants marriage is not honorable among infants o gbodo je laarin awon ogbo were igbeyawo lo la laarin awon arobo it cannot be among toddlers marriage is not honorable in toddlers o gbodo je laarin awon ikoko igbeyawo ko lo la laarin awon ikoko it cannot be among adolescent teenagers who do not know their left from their right who are just growing up in life it's not honorable among them ko lo la laarin awon odo were a igbeyawo laarin awon odo to sese n dagba yi igbeyawo lo la laarin won marriage is honorable in all who are matured physically spiritually and they have something doing they can keep themselves and they can keep a man or keep a woman marriage is honorable in all igbeyawo o ni ola laarin eyin ti e ti dagba ti e toju bo eyin to je pe e dagba ni to to ki se pe e dagba ni kan e tun ri si ajese e tun ri nkan te fi le toju obirin iru re yin be igbeyawo lo la laarin yin we need to understand that god himself has placed honor upon marriage o ye koye wa gba gba pe olorun ti kara re ti fi ola gidi gan sori igbeyawo it is a special honor on marriage because it was a false institution that god had after the creation of adam and eve olorun fi ola to lagbara gan sori igbeyawo tori pe o je idasile akoko ninu awon ti olorun dasile leyin isese da adam ati fa Genesis chapter two. No, no, Genesis you see the honor that God Himself put upon Mary. Genesis chapter two verse eighteen. And the Lord God said, "It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him." emi o se oluran lowo ti o dabi re fun in verse 22 and the re with the lord had taken the lord god had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man oluwa olorun si fi egogun iha ti o mu ni iha okunrin na ma obirin o si mu to okunrin na wa and so you will find here think about the time of that marriage iwo na wa ro nipa akoko ti a se gbe yawo yi it was before the fall ele se le saju isugbe which means then marriage was not because of the fall of man it is not because of the sin of man before the fall when man was still holy in the purity that god had made him in god instituted marriage he honored marriage therefore o wa tu ma si wi pe igbe yawo ki si aba jade si subu ti eniyan subu si waju isubu eniyan nigba ti eniyan si wa ni mimo ati ninu pipe iwa re ni olorun se idasile igbe yawo yen ni pe olorun fi ola fun igbe yawo and then look at the place where god himself honored that marriage in the garden of eden before the fall where all the beauty of the glory of creation was centered it was a very crown that showed how great how beautiful the things the lord had made the time and the place where god instituted that marriage showed very clearly that he honored marriage igbe yawo na ti sele o sele ninu ogba edeni 
iyan ni pe ni bi ti ewa ogo ati ola olorun tin joba eleni wi pe olorun fi ola ti o ga ti o si polopo lopo fun igbeyawo tori ko lo se idasile re now we see that god the father or not married let's look at god the son himself Ari, jesus christ our lord and savior ari pe olorun baba o fi ola fun iya fun igbeyawo ni baye wa je ke awo olorun omo jesus christ bi o se polopo fun igbeyawo in john chapter 2 ninu johanu ori keji looking at verses 1 and 2 ese ikin ni ati keji and the third day There was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage Ni joketa asin se igbeyawo kan ni Cana ti Galilee iya Jesus sin be nibe asi pe Jesus ati awon omo eyin re pelu si bi igbeyawo And in verse 11 this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him Ni ese iko kan la akose se ami yi ni Jesus si se ni Cana ti Galilee When you think about the many miracles that Jesus performed, and you think of the reason why he performed those miracles, that there was supernatural signs to prove that this is the Messiah, this is the Anointed One, this is Christ the Savior, and the very first sign he will give to show the people that I am the expected one. He gave that sign in the marriage in Cana of Galilee. He honored marriage. He said. mi meri ri ti o han pe Jesus ni Messiah oni Christi oni eni ti a o fi se bo fun ese araye and mi pe oni Messiah ise iya lu akoko yi lo se ni bi igbeyawo ti a se ni Cana ti Galilee in Ephesians now chapter 5 ninu Ephesu bayi ori karun you know that all scripture is given by inspiration of God o ma pe gbogbo ewe mi ma ni abi fun ni pa emi si Olorun you know that this came from the Holy Spirit himself o si ma pe leyi gan lati ode mi ma gan lo ti wa what did the Holy Spirit lead Paul the apostle to write concerning marriage. He tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25. Husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and he gave himself for it. And then he tells us in verse 28 so men so ought men to love their wives as their bodies he that loveth his wife loveth himself o to so fun ani ese ikeji din logbon pe be ni o to ki awon okunrin ki o ma feran awon aya won gege bi awon ara awon ti kara won eni ti o ba feran aya re o feran awon ti kara e in this is a great mystery but i speak concerning christ and the church ese ikeji le logbon asirin la ni eyi sugbon emi so ni pa ti christi ati ti ijo here is the holy spirit telling us that the relationship between christ and his church is like into that of the husband and the wife making use of marriage as a pure symbol as a good symbol to show us the relationship eternal relationship between christ and his church ni ni apostle so ni pa ibase ko ijo ati christi ti o wa nfi igbeyawo se apere mimo ele ti o si apere aye raye nipa igbe nipa igbeyawo tabi asepo tin be laarin christi ati ijo re how this shows us very clearly then as god the father honors marriage jesus the son of god honors marriage and the holy spirit the holy ghost also honors marriage ele lo wa fi wa lo fi han wa gbangba gege bi olorun baba se fi ola fun igbeyawo olorun omo jesus christi o fi ola fun igbeyawo emi mi mo fun rara re o wa lowo si igbeyawo the point is this if the father the son the holy ghost the trinity if that god the godhead honors marriage then we the children of god we ought to honor marriage koko ti a wa fe fa yo me ni pe bi baba bi omo ati bi emi mi mo ati bi meta la meta lokan lapapo ti an ba fi ola nla fun igbeyawo awa ti aji omo olorun a gbodo fi ola to ga fun igbeyawo it means we should not do anything that will dishonor marriage iya ni pe a o gbodo se nkan kan ti o ko yen igbeyawo kere number 1 in doctrine we should never dishonor marriage akoko ninu eko ta fi nkan ni a o gbodo fi ogorin ya igbeyawo kere you in the church in general we should not dishonor we should not be little we should not relegate marriage to the background we should not be negative to marriage in the church ekeji ni pe ninu ijo lapapo a o gbodo foju tin bi ni oro igbeyawo a o gbodo tabuku igbeyawo a o gbodo so igbeyawo di o n ye pere ninu ijo number 3 we should not dishonor 
we should not destroy the marriage of any individual. If we honor it, we're not going to destroy it. And God honors marriage in all. Therefore, as a member of the church, as a child of God, you will be very careful. You do not tamper with the family of anyone in the church or even in the society. So then it is very clear that if we love God, if we honor God, you will love what God loves, you will honor what God honors, you will hate only what God hates, then are you manifesting that you are children of God? We come back to Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. Let the church, let the honor God has put on marriage, let it remain. And there is one way we are going to honor marriage. It says the must remain undefiled. Because all mongers and adulterers, God will judge. That leads us to point two in our study. God's great judgment against immorality. God's great judgment against immorality. It tells us all mongers okay. and adulterers, God will judge. Very clearly then, anyone that dishonors marriage, through immorality, through fornication, through adultery, dishonors God. And then God says, he will judge him. Malachi chapter 3 verse 5. Malachi chapter 3 verse 5. Malachi chapter 3 verse 5. And I will come near to you to judgment. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adult idol, adulterers. Here we can see the attitude of God. He will be swift, he will be quick in judging the sorcerers and the adulterers. He puts them in the same group, in the same team of the people that are going to receive the fairy judgment of God. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 5. Ephesians 5 5. For this ye know that no homonger, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And the apostle was telling the believers, he said, it's no secret. Everybody knows this. Everybody should know this. He was telling them that if you belong to the church at Ephesus, and you are living in adultery, and you are living in fornication, you do not have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ, neither do you have inheritance in the kingdom of God, you'll just be a nominal bench warmer in the Ephesians church, and you will not get to heaven. Then he said in verse 6, Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things, adultery, fornication, covetousness, and such like, because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Nitori ni pasen kawaye agbere pansaga ojukoko ati ruba wani 
In First Corinthians chapter ten verse eight. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Ben, Nikia, Wakuma, say, say, Agberi. Gagabi, I want me running on what you say. T. Egba, Moka, Lale, Egba, Reni, as his Subuni Joka. Now you will see the attitude of God. And if you're really on the side of the Lord, if you have the mind of Christ, if you have the spirit of God, you will not take adultery, fornication with a light hand. You will not belittle it and you will not say, What is it that uh, we have done that nobody else has done before? It was so serious that in one single day, 23,000 died among the children of Israel and went to hell because of immorality, because of fornication and adultery. And in First Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now you see, the greatest thing that can happen to you or happen to me is to enter the kingdom of God. That's greater than being a pastor of a church. It's greater than being a worker in the church. It's greater than being called a member of deeper life. The greatest thing that can happen to you or happen to me is for God to open the door of the kingdom of God and say, Come in, inherit the kingdom of God. That's the greatest thing that can happen to all. The greatest evil, the greatest danger, the greatest calamity that can happen to me or happen to you is for God to say, you can be a pastor, but I don't want you in my kingdom. You can be a worker, you can be a member of what they call deeper life, you can remain there, I allow you to remain there, but I will never allow you to enter the kingdom of God. That's the greatest calamity that can happen to you or happen to me. You see, if you or I, anyone, if we commit fornication or adultery and no man knows about it and we keep our position as pastor, as worker, as member in the church, and we think we're doing well, after all, I'm still the pastor, after all, I'm still the leader, and we do not get to heaven, is the greatest eternal calamity that can happen to anyone. Oh. Be very careful. We must be free from adultery, free from fornication, if we're going to get to the kingdom of God. Oh. Why is it very serious to commit fornication or adultery? Number one, it makes some believers around us blaspheme the name of God. But that's what they say. You say you are born again. You say you are going to deeper. You say you believe in holiness. Look at this now. It will make those unbelievers to blaspheme the name of the Lord. When you do it, it's a serious 
serious matter. Awon ala igbagba yo ma toka le bu si o pe se bo lo nlo dipa. Se bo ni Christian ni o wa wo nkan to da lasa ni sisin yi. Eleyi o fi aye igba awon oto Olorun awon ala igbagba lati ma soro de si Olorun. Number 2, it will drag the reputation of Christ and the reputation of the church into the mud. Ekeji ni pe yo mu oruko Christi ati Ola Christi ati yi ti jo ni yo mu wonu abata lo won fi gole. Number 3, it makes us to forfeit our relationship and fellowship with God. Eketa ni pe yo mu wa padanu ibasepo ati ibado re pelu Olorun ta ni tele yo mu wa padanu re. The assurance of salvation you will lose it. Ida ni loju igbalaye yo sonu me lowo. And the joy of salvation rejoicing that you belong to the Lord you will lose it. Ayo ti igbala pe o je ti Oluwa a mu o padanu re. The name will no more be in the book of life. Oruko re a o pare ku onu we yi. It makes us to lose the power and the privilege of ministry. Ekeni ni pe yo mu wa padanu agbara you see brothers and sisters the words you are hearing from me, the ordinary words, except they are impregnated by the Holy Ghost, energized by the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Ghost, except the Holy Ghost will make use of them like arrows coming into somebody's heart, it will not have any effect at all. Therefore, if a person like me, for example, just a preacher, if uh, he commits an adultery or fornication, maybe the church doesn't know. He'll keep on preaching, he'll keep on speaking empty words, it will have no power. It will save no soul. It will not be effective on anybody. He might be there as a figurehead, but the power, the privilege of ministry has been taken away. That's why adultery, fornication is a serious matter. <laughs> Agbara ti ma je ki elese ko gba ofa lowo Olorun ko ronu kuada ko ku ese sile ko ni si ninu oro na oro na yo kan ma da ko ma fefe agbara ati anfani ti eyan ni ninu ise ranse ni gele to ba wonu ese agbere ati pansaga lo yo padanu re tori be ni ese agbere ati pansaga se je n to lewu lopopo the very reason why god is very serious about it is because it hurts your loyal wife or your faithful husband, the one who has been keeping herself and saying, no, I will not allow that to happen to me because I, I want to be loyal to my husband. If the husband now, that the wife is trying to keep herself, becomes unfaithful, it hurts the wife to the death of her heart. That will be very difficult to comfort that woman. <laughs> Bai ya wo re to je olo to si o tabi oko re ti o ti fo kan ton iyan ni pe nigbati aya pe ninu okan re pe olayi to ko mi nikan ni to si nfi olayi en fun e ti o fe je alaiso to si o sugba nigbati ru iyawo gbe e ba lo gbe yin gbo wi pe iwo gan lo wa je alaiso to a mu o gbe nla wa sinu okan iyawo be it it makes us to lose the respect and the honor and the trust of our own children e ke fa ni pe yo mu wa padanu ola iteri ba ati igbe kele ti awon mo wa ni ninu wa number 7 we lose the credibility that we have with the leadership of the church the church that has been respecting us before uh, giving us assignment before oh the church will now say we don't know that's how sister so and so is we don't know that's how brother so and so is you lose credibility with the leadership of the church eke je ni wi pe wa padanu ipo yi ipo eye ele to ni la rin awon adari ninu ijo ele to je pe ti se ijo kan ba ti sele wa yan si wa yan si awon ijo won wa pada wa okan won baje lori aye re tori pe won ma so pe ah ase bi arakunrin bayi se burutoni ase bi arabirin bayi se burutoni a mu o padanu ola ati yi to ni la rin ijo but you bring shame on christianity as a whole eke jo ni pe wa wa ko itiju nla ba gbogbo ese christian la pa you hinder the repentance of sinners to be converted eke san ni pe wa mu ide na ba awon elese lati ronu ku ada we say why are we going to repent the people that are preaching to us to repent they themselves we didn't know they were doing the things they are telling us to repent from why should i repent you will hinder the repentance of sinners and if they go to hell because of your sin it were better you are not born Number 10, it exposes you to the danger of contracting gonorrhea or AIDS or a deadly disease. Number 11, 
Number 11, it weakens other believers who are facing temptation. Those who have been saying, if God is helping brother so and so, he will help me, I will stand. If God is helping sister so and so, who the husband has run away and they're still expecting the husband and the husband is not there now and she is taking her stand. If God is helping her, God will help me. Then this person hears, the person that he thinks God is helping has fallen into sin. The sister that he thinks God is helping as falling into a multi, ah, he will say, if those people have done it, I cannot survive. Those who are saying that the Number 12 is very serious. It makes Satan to be happy and to laugh at God. And to laugh at Christ and say, Christ, come here, come here. You say you died on the cross. You say you saved those people. And you say that your blood has power to save. My own temptation is stronger than your blood. Do and look at them. Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at this one. I made them to Paul. And all his demons will be laughing at Christ saying, after all, Christ has no power. When you do something that makes Satan to laugh at God and laugh at Christ and laugh at the sacrifice on Christ of Calvary, you've done something so very bad. You see now why God is unhappy about it. Okay. Number 13. The blood of Jesus is strong, we will overcome. Because the Christ sent us into us, and we keep on reading the Bible, and we are praying, and we depend upon the Lord, He will keep us, He will keep us in Jesus' name. We look at point number three, godliness and freedom from immorality. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. When you look at that part and the bed undefiled. Forget the past. Start from today. Whatever your backslide in the past, forget and start from today. And come to make a new resolution, a new kind of covenant with the Lord Almighty. That the bed will be undefiled. You will not sleep anywhere that you will do something that the public cannot hear about. In House, in another person's house, in an hotel, when you travel out of town, wherever you may find yourself, you make up your mind that the bed will be undefiled. Why are you doing that? Because you have something to guard, you have something to keep. What are you keeping? What are you guarding? Number one, you have your soul to guard and to keep. It never dies so. If you have been redeemed by the Lord, if you have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, and if there is a place you know is prepared for you in heaven, you want to preserve, you want to guard this soul that has been saved, it will not be polluted again by the sin of fornication or adultery. Number two, your salvation. That the salvation you have got nothing will take it away from you. Salvation is greater than money. 
is greater than property. It's greater than anything you can have in the world. And this greatest of gifts coming from Christ through Calvary that the Lord has given to you. You want to keep and guard it so that nothing will take it away from you. Number three, our relationship with God. Adam and Eve lost that in the Garden of Eden. Think about such a relationship that we should be called the children of God. That we should be called the sons and the daughters of the King of Kings. That we should have the privilege and say, Our Father, which art in heaven. That we will live within us and will walk in His way. At any time we have any need, we can go to the throne of grace and we can ask Him for anything that we need. Such a relationship you need to guard, you need to keep, and if you are going to guard it, there will be no fornication, there will be no adultery, there will be no immorality. Number four is our rewards in glory. We've been singing about heaven. We've been talking about heaven. Some of us have had dreams on the rapture. And some of us will, will, will remember heaven every time, and we know that that day will come when it will reward us in glory. For all that reward in glory, you will lose in a moment of time because of the pleasure of sin. Number five, what we have to get, the deposit of the Spirit and the power of God in all. They look at the Holy Spirit that is given to us, the abiding comforter. The power of the Holy Ghost. That same power that manifested itself in the life of Jesus Christ. And he said, the works I do, ye shall do also. We need to get that one by keeping ourselves away from adultery, away from fornication. Number six, our privilege in ministry. Have you ever thought about it? Even for you to stand on this pulpit like this, before thousands of people, even if it is to only make announcements even if it is to come here and sing a solo if it is to come here before thousands of people and lead such the scripture a great privilege indeed and uh, there is a privilege that many many other people are looking forward to sometimes uh, some people they meet me they are outside a deeper life Bible church. And then they will say, one of them told me he had a dream. And in that dream, he saw me. And then he was standing by my side. And he was so very happy. And then he said, I took a big Bible in hand. And he wanted to just help me carry the Bible. And then come to a large congregation. Then he woke up. Then they will tell me he became sorrowful. Then they will tell me, Pastor, please give me the interpretation of that dream. Since I am not in your church, should I come to your church and say, well, if you come, you are coming and say, member. He said, what? But I had a dream. They look at it as a great privilege. And for those of us who are here, and the privilege already is in our hand, ah, I pray that this privilege, nothing will take it away from your hand in Jesus' name. Number 
Number seven, our testimony, you need to keep it or you need to guard it. Number eight is our family. You know, if you get into this something like this, you can scatter your family, scatter your children, lose the respect of your family. That precious family the Lord has given you, where you are rejoicing, there is love in your family. Keep that family, get that family, run away from this other thing because it will make you lose your family. Nitori pe to ba lo lowo si awon nkan wa yi yo da gbogbo ebi re ru nitori eleyi lo fin lati su ara re ku oninu awon nkan wa yi ki ife ko le ma tesu wa jinu ebi re number 9 our health e ke so ni ile ra wa because uh, diseases dangerous deadly diseases are now being transmitted by fornication and adultery if you want to keep your health you must run away from adultery and fornication nitori pe laye ode oni iku ti di meji e pin ni aisan ko gbogbo tin kiri gbogbo aye nitori ase agbere ati pansaga yi and we keep our wealth and resources. Eleven, our reputation. And twelve, our future, our destiny in eternity. How are we going to be able to keep ourselves from this immorality and from fornication and adultery? In Matthew chapter 5. Reading from verse 5. Verse 27. You have heard that it was said of them by them of old, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery without ready in his heart. And if thy right hand offend thee, thy right hand offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members shall perish, and not that thy whole body shall be cast into hell. If somebody is as uh, useful to you as your eye, profitable to you as your eye, dear to you as your eye, precious to you as your eye, if he is uh, leading you to commit immorality, leading you to have laws, leading you to have thoughts that will make you go into sin, cut off from him, cut off from her. It is profitable for you to cut her off and enter into life without the advantage of joining together with her or with him, rather than you have him, you have her, and you have all the things you are doing together, then you go to hell. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Any picture that will bring immorality into your heart, abstain. Any intimacy between you, a man, and a woman in the office, or in your house, or in the church, any intimacy that will bring suggestions that are evil in your heart, in your heart, that you will not be able to control, cut off that intimacy. Any film show, any video, because there are some people who say, I don't believe what the church is saying. Don't watch this, don't watch this. I am a matured person, all right? Any video, any film that will bring suggestions of evil into your heart, cut it off. video Any 
a ewa wo ran cinema tabi video kan to ba ma mu ete tabi ile pa lati se ife ku fe wa sinu okan re yago fun i believe we can live a victorious life mo gba gbo pe ale gbe aye asegun we can enjoy complete freedom from sin ale ni afani lati di omira pata pata pa lo wese copy am i to have a good daily quiet time and prayer before the lord it will strengthen your fellowship with god ti o ba le se pe ninu okan re lati ni akoko idakeje lojo ojuma ti o lo dere ati akoko adura pelu oluwa yo mu ki igbagbo re lagbara you keep your hearts you keep your mind you keep your eyes away from any magazine away from any place any people that will bring temptation to lost in your life keep yourself away from them mama pa okan re aya re oju re mo kuro ninu awon iwe ati gbade gbabi magazine ati awon awora tabi awon nkan to wa layi ka wa to le mu wa lo sini idewo from the beginning of a little thought that's the time to deal with that problem nigba ti eroyen ba ko so kule ninu okan re doju ko ero na because thoughts will produce action nitori pe ero yo mu wa lo sinu ise actions will lead to habit ise yo si mu ki o di wa wa habit when it becomes regular will form your character iwa yen ta ba nse lera lera a wa di baraku fun wa character will determine your destiny ba didi baraku to di baraku yen ni o pe nu bi to ti lu aye raye re may god make us free and keep us free in jesus name adura wa ni pe ki oluwa so wa do mi ra ko si pa wa mo ninu omi ni ra na ni oruko jesus job chapter 31 verse 1 job ori kokan le logbe ese ikini i made a covenant with my eyes why then shall i think upon him emi ti ba oju mi da ma je mu nje emi o wa se tejuma mun dia but my brothers and sisters you need to take some decisions and those decisions will make you to actually cut off quite a lot of things ara korin ati ara berin mi o lati yan ipe no kan awon ipe no to ba yan yan oni oje mu gbogbo awon nkan kan ku oni ninu aye re sometimes you'll find uh, somebody will say i am a deeper life uh, brother and will say what work are you doing and he will say well i ride okada and uh, i take all those people will say uh, you are a member of this church you say yes i ride okada and you take all those women at your back pressing their chest on you when you break and you are still a christian well i'm trying to be a christian when the trumpet sounds we may not find you among us up there igba miran a ma si alagba pade awon kan ani christian lo ta ba ni bole ati je christian ti ani jo deeper se ni to to ni o ise ki le wa nse wa ni a awon to ma ngwa lukuku okada ise yen ni mo nse je o awon ti a de wa so pe se lo to ni ise christian ni oni be ni te ba de ngwa okada yin awon obirin a de joko leyin yin igba ti o ba joko leyin yin te ba te break e faragbura e de ni christian ni ani a mo ngbi yanju lati je christian ni ah ti pe ba dun boya la riru awon eyan be you find the lady sisters they say they are deeper life they will sit at the back of that okada and they will hold the man like this with their breast and chest behind the man they are still deeper life sisters if the trumpet sounds we may not find you among us over there igba mi re we awon mi da ti o lawon ji omo deeper life awon sisi le ri ti won o joko leyin oga leyin okada wa tun wa di mo okun yen olokada yen wa ti nu awon ato yen wa ti mo leyin wa ta ba si ni se ma di pa ni wa lo ma di pa na ni e ba ba ori ta to ti pe ba dun boya la ri o nbe you need a covenant to make heaven o ni lo lati se pe ni lati do i'm talking about a serious matter oro to si le la so ni pa re it was a matter that made joseph when that woman wanted to commit sin with him he let his clothes and ran away he didn't stay there and said i'm still a believer i will manage if you are managing like that the trumpet may sound we may not find you up there ani an so ni pa nkan to je pe ni gba to wa so do joseph o ma nto se agbada re o so nu ni o sa sa la fe mi re ki se boka joko nbe ko wa mo gbadura pe mo nda gbon ogbon wo lo nda o le do gbon yen ki pe oduwa o de ni ri o nbe if you are a man you make a covenant with your eyes so ba joko rin da ma je mu pelu oduwa a covenant with your body e ma je mu pelu awon a covenant with your hand ma je mu pelu awon a covenant with everything you have ma je mu pelu gbogbo to ba ni will not meditate in an evil way with lust upon a maid be o ni ma sasaro pelu ero idibaje ninu okan re si odomobirin if i lady the same thing go ba jo mo birin ka ka ni you will make a covenant 
covenant with your eyes. A covenant with the members of your body. That you will not be so familiar with the mind. It will be bringing evil suggestions to you. And then you already be practicing evil. And when you see the mind, you are so helpless. You cannot resist evil. You will make a covenant tonight. You are going to be holy in the name of Jesus. Trumpet your son now. Are you ready for the Lord? Do you think that just because we come to Bible study, we're all here, we're preaching, we're hearing, we're walking, we're serving, we're leading? Do you think that's enough to get to heaven? Do you think that's enough to get to heaven? My own desire is that I will not just preach in vain. I don't just want to be a preacher. I want to live a life privately and publicly that when the trumpet sounds by the grace of God, I still want to make it on that final day. And if you have already fallen into sin, instead of managing and just saying I'm a worker, I'm a leader, why don't you leave all those things aside and go to the very presence of God and dig deep and pray until the blood of Jesus will cleanse you once again. You'll never remain, again, remain the same again. And then the power of God will come afresh. The purity of the Lord will come afresh. You will know you are a real child of God. After that, if there is work to do, fine. If there is no work to do, you'll be waiting until we go to heaven. So, Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. We are not looking for work, we are looking for how to get to heaven. We are not looking for position here, we are looking for how to get to heaven. And we are not running away from discipline here, I don't want them to hear, I don't want them to discipline me, I want to keep my work, I want to be serving. We are not looking for that here, we came here because this is the gateway to heaven. Look at your life. Open it before the Lord. Be transparent before the Lord. Activity will not take you to heaven. Being a pastor will not take me to heaven. And being a leader will not take me to heaven. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. You may run to another church and they make you a preacher, they make you a pastor. That doesn't take anybody to heaven. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. But there is power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power in the blood of the Lamb. He can cleanse you, he can cleanse me. He can purify you, he can purify me. He can make you holy, he can make me holy. He can change your life, he can change my life. He can put our feet on the way that goes to heaven. And make us faithful. And make us pure. And make us holy. Whether our wives are there or not there. Whether our husbands are there or not there. He can put that thing that hates sin in our hearts. That sister, you will not allow your manager, your boss to be fumbling with your body. You will know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And brother, you will not allow the devil to be making fun of you and ridiculing you and even laughing at Christ because of your action, you will live a righteous life, you will live a holy life that heaven will be happy about you.
we can be holy. We can be righteous. But not all things are possible. And if you believe tonight, He will cleanse you. He will forgive you. He will strengthen you. He will empower you. You go out of this place in victory. And you will be triumphant in Christ.